Hello there, I hope you are all doing very well. This video will be a different one than usual. I understand this video will likely be a controversial one, depending on how far it reaches. However, please keep all comments and conversations with others down below kind, understanding, and civil. All comments will be seen. This is not a political video, and this discussion will only really cover the effects that climate change has on tornadoes and severe thunderstorms and the timing of their events and locations. Just a heads up, this will be a research, nerd, and science heavy video. Also note that though most points in this video apply to the whole planet, this video will mainly focus on the United States' climatology, as that is where most of my knowledge in meteorology lies. Further analysis of other regions may come later. I would like to bring attention to some points and help others understand more about severe weather. I am also putting a glossary in the description. Enjoy. Believe it or not, winter tornadoes and severe weather outbreaks have always been a thing. For example, January of 1999 had a big time outbreak of tornadoes in the south. The winter leading into 1991 had some activity also, even an F3 in Missouri. Going back even further, the winter leading into 1983 also had several strong to violent tornadoes. The winter leading into 1971 had a February F5 in the deep south, and a significant Wisconsin tornado event occurred in December of 1970. Even 1967 had a major January breakout in the Midwest, with six F3s and two F4s. Looking back in history, it is clear that winter tornadoes are nothing new. However, winter years have been striking. Let's see what recent years have given us. 2020 had a very active tornado period during the winter and early spring. A significant severe weather outbreak impacted the southern plains and south from January 10th through the 11th. Another dangerous outbreak impacted similar regions and up the coast from February 5th through 7th. March then came in with above average activity for tornadoes before the main tornado season with an F4 early in the month and the devastating Nashville, Tennessee tornado as well, as well as some tornadoes in the southern plains. Despite the busier than normal winter for tornadoes, tornadoes in the south are not rare during the winter. January and February of 2021 were lacking in tornadoes as usual, but March was fierce, but not anything unheard of by any means. During the latter months of 2021, things began getting very interesting though. As a La Nina pattern was setting up in the Pacific Ocean, the statistical second tornado season in the fall began to rapidly overperform and expand far beyond its usual territory in the deep south. October of 2021 tallied 146 twisters which is more than 2.3 times the average number for the month. The month had tornado day after tornado day, with a significant event on the 10th in Oklahoma and an outbreak on the 24th in Missouri. In May of 2021, the statistical peak month for activity in Oklahoma, Oklahoma received 10 tornadoes. But in October of the same year alone, the state received 31, breaking the state record for October set back in 1998. October of 2021 wouldn't really be a month that would keep many talking for several years, but the following December would. Towards the middle of the second week of the month, the weather community caught wind of what looked to be a large-scale tornado event. The Gulf of Mexico was warmer for December than it had been in decades. As time progressed, the trends only grew more concerning. On the morning of December 10th, 2021, millions of people woke up to the pleasures of 60 and 70 degree temperatures not knowing the pandemonium that would occur just hours later. Tornado watches were in place across much of the Ohio Valley and parts of the Midwest. In the late afternoon, tall clouds started building, and after sunset, severe storms started to pop off in a very volatile environment. Two simultaneous outbreak modes were underway, one in central Missouri and one near the mid-Mississippi Valley region. A supercell thunderstorm was beginning to intensify as it moved towards northeast Arkansas. Meanwhile, the cluster of supercell storms in Missouri had started producing tornadoes on its way to St. Louis and was turning deadly. In northeast Arkansas, a group of tornadoes was produced and near Jonesboro, the second deadliest tornado of the month, made its way to the earth. The tornado tracked through the Missouri boot heel and into the northwest tip of Tennessee. Along the way, it tragically caused eight fatalities and injured 16 people. Meanwhile, two EF-3s had just lashed areas near St. Louis, one of which caused a fatal collapse of part of a warehouse. That system continued to rage throughout Illinois and produced many tornadoes. The storm to the south was entering Kentucky, and another violent tornado was formed. This one went on to impact many towns in Kentucky, some of which were Case, Mayfield, Princeton, Dawson Springs, and Bremen. This tornado tragically took many lives and caused untold devastation and suffering. After the tornado of the night began to wane, another round of chaos was underway moving into Tennessee and went on to produce many destructive tornadoes 
including a deadly EF-3 in Bowling Green. When it was all said and done, 68 tornadoes touched down, causing 92 fatalities and almost 700 injuries, according to the Tornado Archive Data Explorer. As daylight came, pain ensued around the nation. It is important to remember the human aspect, the sole reason why weather research is so important. Whether it was an EF-0 or an EF-4, these tornadoes ended or shook many lives. Each person, a friend, father, mother, sibling, or a lover. Each person, an opportunity for a better community. As a severe weather enthusiast and storm chaser, this event was massively humbling, and it was definitely a somber and tension-filled time in the weather community and for many others. After such an unexpected calamity, especially for December, it was hard to take what weather prediction software was suggesting would arrive in the next few days seriously. But sure enough, Mother Nature had another off-season tornado outbreak in store. In the days leading up to Wednesday, December 15th, the already shaken weather community had to prepare for what could be another major severe weather day. In the dawn hours of December 15th, 2021, millions of people again woke up to record warmth and moisture for December. A major wind system was in place over the central United States with low-level jet winds in the open warm sector ahead of the storm front, as well as intense winds on and behind it. In the early afternoon, an arc of thunderstorms, known as a derecho, ignited over western Kansas. As the afternoon progressed, more storms formed along the line, extending the derecho further south into Kansas. As the line of storms ripped eastward, it produced a massive swarm of tornadoes, mainly in Nebraska and Iowa, along with record-breaking extensive wind gusts and damage stretching from South Dakota to southern Kansas. A supercell located on the often forgotten southern portion of the squall line produced softball-sized hail in Lyon County, Kansas, according to the Storm Prediction Center. As the storm continued to race northeast, it produced several tornadoes in southern Minnesota. Before 2021, Minnesota had never had a December tornado ever on record. On December 15th, they saw 20 of them in a matter of hours. Iowa counted 63 tornadoes from the outbreak, and over all the affected states, a total of 120 tornadoes touched down. To make things worse, not only was this system accompanied by dust storms and wildfires, on the backside of the low pressure system were blizzard conditions. This meant that in a matter of hours, some places went from 70 degrees and tornadoes to snow-covered rubble. After these two unprecedented events, which had just crushed almost all weather records for December, within five days of each other, it was clear that something was not normal, whether it was temporary or permanent. If you think it stops here, think again. As anticipated, the active second year La Nina weather pattern made the tornado season of 2022 start fast-paced and earlier than normal for many places. The first big day was late during the winter on March 5th. Though the setup had some uncertainty, it was eerily similar to the December 15th setup just a few months prior. Later in the afternoon of March 5th, 2022, a deadly long-tracking EF-4 tornado was summoned in Iowa, making it the first EF-4-plus tornado that has ever touched down that far north that early in the year. The rest of March continued to overperform, setting a new record for the most active March in history for tornadoes. Fast forward to January 2023, and the occurrence of many out-of-place winter tornadoes is still present. January is currently much above average for tornadoes and tornado touchdowns in the United States with even states like Illinois, Iowa, and even California already having received at least one tornado. <sighs> okay, well, I've just given you all those examples of recent and unprecedented wintertime tornado events and numbers. I understand that your brain's probably like, dude, come on. I understand your brain's probably like, uh, your brain probably hurts, and you're probably quite annoyed at me, and I, I totally apologize, and I understand that. Um, I'll, I'll, play, I'll, play a, I'll play some of my time lapse, and uh, lightning captures and hopefully maybe make it a little more relaxing and I'll, um, I'll be back in a few seconds.
I hope that that has taken any stress you may feel from this video away. So I also want to elaborate on the placement of many recent cold season tornadoes. In order to do this, we'll need to go over the two most distinct areas that are prone to tornadoes. The most well known is in the central United States, dubbed Tornado Alley, stretching in areas east of the Rocky Mountains from Texas to the Dakotas. However, there is another hot spot for twisters, known as Dixie Alley in the Deep South. To add relevancy, the Great Plains, aka Tornado Alley, most often experiences severe thunderstorms and tornadoes from April to June. But in Dixie Alley, tornadoes are favored during the cool months into the early spring, according to the National Severe Storms Laboratory, particularly in November through early April. Because of the abundant warmth and moisture in the Gulf of Mexico interacting with cold air and a seasonably intense jet stream during the winter, tornadoes and severe thunderstorms in Dixie Alley are commonplace during the winter. But not only are winter tornadoes in the south becoming more frequent, they are also on the rise in states that are only supposed to be seeing tornadoes in the warmer months. So, with so many striking off-season severe weather events in recent memory, it has had many people in the weather community talking. Here's part of what tornado climatologist James B. Elsner said in a New York Times article. We've been seeing below average numbers of tornadoes in 2021, but with outbreaks becoming more common during the cooler months in recent years, and tornadoes becoming more often across the southeast compared with the Great Plains. Most winter tornadoes like to happen in the southeast, but with more warmth, they could move further north. James also said that climate change caused the exceptionally warm Gulf of Mexico, which led to unseasonably warm and moist air masses to move north into the continental United States. These air masses interacted with the seasonably strong winter jet stream, which was exacerbated by the Pacific La Nina pattern, and in turn set the stage for widespread severe thunderstorms that could produce tornadoes in December of 2021. You see, a warming climate can do two main things when it comes to an atmosphere regarding storm feel. By increasing water and air temperature, more moisture can be brewed in the Gulf of Mexico and other large bodies of water worldwide. This would support James's claim on warming temperatures adding storm energy to the environment during the cooler months, expanding the tornado season. However, a warming climate could also limit tornado activity. Here's why. The first reason being drought. According to John Bateman at NOAA, the 2022 average annual temperature across the continental United States was 53.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.4 degrees above the 20th century average, raking in the warmest third of the 128 year record. Adding on to this, the annual precipitation across the continental United States totaled 1.59 inches below average. Nebraska had its fourth driest year on record and California had its ninth driest, while in the western United States, Drought conditions reached a peak coverage of 91.3% of the region on May 3rd, the typical peak of tornado season. The second reason branches off of this. If warmer and or drier air sits in the western United States, it can be dragged over the central United States and sit aloft in the atmosphere and hinder storms from forming and or persisting through it. This is known as a cap. Depending on whether ocean temperature and jet stream patterns are being influenced by El Nino or La Nina patterns, more heat could mean more or less storms and therefore more or less tornadoes. Though it is easy to jump to conclusions on whether or not the increasing frequency of unprecedented events is linked to climate change or not, like lots of other research, there are a few holes in the data. And please don't take this the wrong way, I do not mean that any guesses on climate change are wrong nor am I disconsidering it. For instance, in years prior to 1950, mostly before any of the major technology advancements of the 1940s, majority speaking, only strong tornadoes were recorded. This meant that almost every tornado that was rated F0 or F1 went unaccounted for. According to the Penn State Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science, about 80% of all tornadoes are weak being rated F-Zeros or F-1s. If almost 80% of all recorded tornadoes from 1875 to 1950 were not recorded or went unnoticed, then that means that over half of tornado records are disproportional, heavily skewing averages for tornado counts from the 18th to 20th century, and thus making it not even remotely useful. Another point is that media and technology did not become super fast and reliable until recent decades. The boost in social media had a major impact on the number of tornadoes that get confirmed and recorded. Let's look at some more fascinating data. Obviously, the usage of social media has blown up in recent times. According to BroadbandSearch.net, the number of social media users increased by 69% from 2008 to 2021, and that's just in the last 15 years. Because of more advanced broadcasts, more people with cell phones with pictures and videos, and so many more storm chasers and spotters in the field inspired by media in recent years, 
perhaps there have been less tornadoes that have gone unnoticed in the last 10 to 20 years. Another thing to note is that in 2011, weather radars received a dual polarization upgrade. Radars have been able to tell us if a storm is rotating for decades, but there was no way to confirm a tornado with a radar. But with the 2011 upgrade, storm debris was now able to be seen on radar, and if it matched with a spot on rotation, it confirmed a tornado. This addition to weather radar has also led to less tornadoes going unnoticed. If you didn't understand the three points that I just made, I suggest you rewatch them as they are quite important to this issue. With so much unproportional data because of many unnoticed and a surge in noticed tornadoes resulting in skewed data, it makes concluding whether or not tornadoes in general are becoming more or less frequent almost impossible, let alone winter tornadoes in particular. And it is for these reasons that despite very alarming trends, we also should remind ourselves to not jump the gun when it comes to tornado climatology. So of course that begs the question then, does climate change affect tornadoes? Are winter tornadoes becoming more common? With the previous points in mind, I believe that looking at past numbers of tornadoes compared with past global temperatures alone, though useful, is not sufficient and is not the best way to answer these questions. Perhaps the better method is to look at past patterns that led to active tornado periods, find out what leads to that pattern and what doesn't, and then determine if the current and future effects of climate change would help lead to that type of weather pattern or not, and if so, by how much. Maybe we should also ask ourselves some higher level questions like, do changing sea temperatures impact El Nino and La Nina weather events that could influence severe storms? Have we been studying meteorology long enough to know Earth's long-term climate patterns from human-induced climate change? Could melting ice cool ocean temperatures and affect severe storms? Does adding heat to the atmosphere increase drought and not just moisture? Could adding heat to the atmosphere create warmer air at high altitudes instead of cold air and thus limit storm development? Alright. Alright. I know that you're probably more stressed out and confused right now than somebody making a 30 minute connection after being stuck on the tarmac for 20 of those minutes. And I apologize, my brain hurts too. I've researched this same exact topic for curiosity, a speech for class, and an English paper, not to mention the massive effort in keeping this video and myself from becoming a controversial cluster crap. So mine definitely hurts too. With all this being said, just take away this. Theoretically, yes. A warming climate would cause more tornadoes to have a chance at developing in the winter months due to freak warm air temperatures interacting with the strong winter jet stream. However, any conclusion is still just a hypothesis, as there is more to tornadoes and storms than just warm air. So be open to all professional ideas and hypotheses on this topic of severe weather. Also, a special thank you to all the experts in this field who make studying this topic and being able to hear professional opinions and understand and analyze them possible. I hope this video was informative and interesting to watch and that you more understand the complexity of climate change's impact on tornadoes and severe weather. Thank you for watching and have a good day.